Hey everyone, welcome to today's practice. Today I'm starting in butterfly pose. So hands are wrapped around our feet, arms are long, back is stretched long, our legs are butterflied out, knees are being pushed towards the earth as we're sitting tall and setting an intention for today's practice. Closing down the mind now that you're here on the mat. And taking a big deep breath in. Just going to place our hands behind our hips. And just take our chest towards the sky, leaning back, getting this beautiful arch in our back, dropping the head back, taking the gaze up towards the ceiling. And then curving our spine the other way as we drop our head and our chest towards our pelvis. Pulling our body forward and then exhaling back into the back bend pose, stretching through the abdominals and then curving back the opposite way. One more time here, really opening up the chest and the heart. And then collapsing forward, pulling our chest towards the ground. Just sitting tall again, coming back to neutral spine. Placing both hands on the ground. Coming into our tabletop position. Running through our cat cow. So taking the gaze up towards the ceiling. Coming into cat. Inhaling into cow. Dropping the stomach towards the earth. Hips are high. And then taking our gaze through our legs as we curve into cat position. Just rolling through that five rounds of cat cow. Going at your own pace. Making sure our wrists are under our shoulders. Knees are under the hips. And our toes are untucked. Resting on the mat. And just going into our bird dog pose, right arm going long out in front of us. Left leg is stretched along at the back and then bringing the elbow to the knee underneath the body. Maybe curling the head as well as you come down. Really engaging the core and the glutes in this movement as well. And then swapping over to the other side. Left arm going long, right leg going long. And then curving the body as we connect the elbow to the knee. Underneath the abs. It's a great pose for elongating the body and getting balance between the two sides. Tucking the toes now, going into downward facing dog, maybe pedaling out the legs if you're feeling a little bit tight in the calves, taking the hips high, shoulders, kind of pulling them away from our ears, sending the hips high and the gaze should be going Towards the back of our body, through our legs. 
Picking the right leg high and not bending that knee and opening up the hips. I'm going to bring that knee forward and just hold and then taking that leg back long, really engaging the abdominals here and finding your flow and connection with breath. And then stepping that foot in between the hands. You can stay up high here with the back left leg or you can drop the knee to the ground and untucking the toes in this low lunge. And just coming up onto the front knee with the hands. Getting a beautiful stretch through the pelvis, through the hip flexors. Taking the arms high above our head, maybe leaning back, getting this beautiful stretch through our spine as we take our fingertips towards the sky. Tucking the back toes and then bringing the right leg back to meet the left as we come into downward facing dog. And change over to the other side now. So left leg goes long, bending that leg and opening the hips towards the sky, bringing that knee up towards the head and then taking the leg long three times, sinking it in with your breath. And then bringing that foot between the hands in this low lunge or runner's lunge and dropping that back knee if you like, untucking the toes in an even deeper stretch, bringing the hands to our knee, and then taking the hands high, maybe leaning back if that feels good for you, breathing, and then placing the hands back on the earth and taking the left leg back to meet the right in downward facing dog. We come into pigeon pose now, so bringing the right leg bent in a 90 degree angle underneath the body, untucking the toes of the left leg as it goes long out the back. You can stay up on your hands if that feels good or you can come down onto your forearms or if you're feeling loose enough and you want to go a little bit deeper you can bring the forehead down onto the forearms. And remembering to breathe really deeply, especially in and around that hip socket, around the glute muscle, breathing life, love, energy, oxygen to that area. And on every exhale, sinking a little bit deeper into the pose. Slowly coming out, tucking the toes under and the right leg goes back to meet the left and then we're going to bring the left leg up on a 90 degree angle underneath the body dropping the right knee to the earth untucking the toes of the right leg staying in this position with the arms straight hands on earth, on the on the mat fingers are spread wide or come down onto your forearms if you're feeling loose enough to do that or crossing the arms and bringing the head down to meet the forearms on the mat. I've been doing yoga daily for three weeks now and there's no way I could have got my head to my hands in those first two weeks. So I was stoked that I was feeling loose enough today to be able to my head to the ground in this pose 
It may not be the case tomorrow, though. You just never know. Tucking the toes, legs are meeting each other in downward facing dog. Just taking a moment here and then walking the feet or jumping if you would like. Swanning the arms out wide as we come to our chair pose, hands at heart center. Maybe sinking a little bit deeper if you can. You can place the arms out in front, fingertips wide, feeling the energy come through the floor, through the legs, through your spine, out through your arms. And then taking the right leg back, coming into air, airplane pose, trying to get that body parallel with the ground. You can see I went a little bit too far here, but you really want to get parallel with the leg and the chest then coming back into standing before dropping into our chair pose we're going to do the other side so left leg will go long arms out wide taking the chest towards the ground pointing the toes of the back leg Coming back to our standing position, hands at heart center, and then just dropping down to chair pose one last time. If you want to challenge your balance, you can take a bit more time here and do a one legged chair pose. Otherwise, bring it in. And then bringing the left foot between the hands, placing the hands on the front left leg and then grabbing the right foot and pulling the heel or the foot towards the bottom. We get this beautiful thigh stretch, beautiful quadricep stretch. Continuing to breathe in this pose and on the exhale, just try and bring that foot a little bit closer to the bottom each time. And this is a great stretch that you can do throughout your day, especially if you're working behind a desk. 
it can be great to just take a moment through your day and stretch out your hip flexors and your quads. Otherwise we get really, really tight around our pelvis and our hips. As we change over to the other side now, right leg is bent at a 90 degree angle in front of us. Using our left hand to pull our left foot towards our bottom. And if you need to, you can roll the mat up so it's a bit more padded underneath the knee. And eventually, it'll be awesome to get the foot to the bottom. Bringing hands back to earth now. I'm going to do some side abdominals. So bringing the right elbow under the right shoulder, legs are bent. And we're going to raise our hips off the ground, bringing our left arm stretched long over the head, raising the hips as high as we can as we squeeze the glutes, keeping the knees together. Not only is this working the abdominals, but it's also doing the obliques as well as the glutes. And then your um, legs are engaged as well. So your thighs, your hamstrings. And slowly coming out of this one, rolling onto the other side. Left elbow under left shoulder, raising up off the earth, taking the right arm long overhead, breathing, just bringing awareness to all the connection points that are touching the earth, the mat, knees, the feet, the elbow, the hands, the forearms. And then slowly coming down out of that pose. And we're going to come slowly into a lying position. Tucking the knees into the chest. Giving a beautiful stretch through that lumbar. And then when you're ready, we're going to interlace the fingers around our big toes, coming into happy baby. So the legs are going wide and we're pulling the toes towards the head. Just getting a really nice stretch in the back of the legs can roll side to side if that feels good, giving your lower back a bit of a massage. Otherwise, just find some stillness and then slowly lowering the feet back to earth. Coming into our final resting pose now, our Shavasana. You can take the legs long if you want to. Today it felt good for me to take the feet wide and drop the knees in to meet each other. Palms are face down today. Closing the eyes. Taking a few deep breaths as you sink deeper and deeper into relaxation. We're going to be here for about four, four or five minutes. As you find peace and serenity, calmness, stillness with the mind, the body, the spirit, I want to talk a little bit about the mind today 
the manas, which covers the entire body, beginning from the brain and the nervous system of the spinal cortex, and then linking outward to our five senses, sight, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. This is where the mind gets most of its information. And then the five organs of action. Our hands, our feet, our tongue, our genital and excretory organs. Which it controls and through which it acts. The mind is connected to our physical body and it's the computer and information storer and sifter. It's like the central processing unit of a computer. The mind faces our external world and deals with the daily affairs of life. And through mind, we engage with experience, we perceive and interpret the world. Our senses perceive and our mind conceives. According to our health and vitality, we enjoy the gift of life to a greater or lesser degree because of our mind-body connection. So when you're ready, just bring some movement back into the body. Maybe stretching, stretching the arms, stretching the back, stretching the hands. And then rolling over to one side. And when you're ready, just slowly coming up into a seated position. Keeping the the eyes closed down. Hands are resting gently on the knees. Maybe putting a smile on your face that represents gratitude. And love, and then bringing our hands to prayer position at our third eye as we close out this practice as we do every day. May we have kind and loving thoughts, may we speak kind and loving words as we move it to our heart center. May we have kind and loving intentions today, and as always. My wish for you is that you live a more inspired life, whatever that looks like for you. Namaste.